Hey everybody, it's Joe the 3D Printing Professor and today I want to teach you a way to make things in Blender to help you organize your stuff easily. Uh, that That is to say it's it's easily make them in Blender to organize your stuff, not, not that you're making them so that they're easy. I mean, they're easy, but uh, let's get into it and, and you'll see how it works. But let's say that you've got a, a messy desk. Trust me, I'm looking at a very messy desk right now. It's got, you know, uh, printer blocks that I've printed out and, and test prints that I've got sitting here and papers and stuff like that. I need to get this organized. In fact, I'm going to start with my sticky notes. I'm going to make a organizer for my sticky notes that will give them a little place, keep them in place, allow me to get at them. So let's see how to do that in Blender. So over here in Blender, I've got my floor object here, which I usually like to have to be able to cut stuff off, but I don't really need that. So I'm just going to delete it. Uh, I'm deleting the default cube in Blender. It's the way you start a project in Blender. It's just, it's just tradition. <laughs> and then I'm going to start by adding a cube and then I'm going to do a little trick on this cube. I'm going to go into edit mode on the cube, hit GZ1 to move it up one into Z so that its bottom is flat to the build plane and its origin is as well. So as I scale it up, it stays kind of on the build plane like that. But what dimensions do I make it? Well, I grab my sticky notes and I grab my calipers, which are somewhere around here. I swear. Uh, oh, there they are. They. I've got a sticker on them. I need to take care of that. All right, turn on my calipers and make sure that they're in millimeter mode. And then let's measure the side of the sticky notes. So measuring these sticky notes, it says it's 76.1413, 76 and a little bit more. Uh, let's measure them the other dimension as well. Also 76 and a little bit more. That makes sense. Uh, they, they, are, they look square and the calipers say that they are square. So we're going to want them to be 76 with a little bit of a margin. We don't want it to be too tight. So I'm going to open up the properties panel, go into item dimensions, and I'm going to type in the dimension 76, 76.5. That's uh, that should be enough. Maybe I should make it 77, but that's all right. How tall to make it? Well, let's see. This particular stack of sticky notes is only nine and a half millimeters tall, but I've used some of them. Uh, you know, maybe let's just Take the 10 and then double it. Let's make them 20 tall. All right, so this right here represents our sticky notes. There we go. And I'm actually gonna, for my own purposes, duplicate and hide one of these copies and go back to the original here. This represents our sticky notes. And what we want to do is turn this into a box for our sticky notes. So here's how we do that. Jump into edit mode, in face select mode, select the top face and then delete it. Now you'll see that this is not a proper object. It's, it's not manifold. It's got holes in it. It's bad. However, and, and if we tried to 3d print this, it wouldn't 3d print. All we have to do is go over to the modifiers panel, add a under generate solidify modifier, and then give it a thickness of, uh, say two. <laughs> now something weird just happened here. This was supposed to give it two millimeter thick walls, but if you've never used solidify before, you might be confused as to what's happening. What's happening. Let's, let's open that transform panel back up. Actually, I'm just going to exit edit mode so we can see it here. We'll notice that the dimensions are correct, but that it also has a scale on it. The way that Blender works is there is a base object and then these transformations are applied to it. Its rotation, its location, and its scale can be changed. And this is really important, especially for animation, but it's useful for other things as well. However, it means that this cube is not 76 millimeters on a side, but it is in fact two millimeters on a side and then blown up. So when we solidified it, we were solidifying the two millimeter thick cube and then blowing it up. And what we want to do is solidify the bigger cube. So how do we do that? It's real simple. You just hit control A and apply your scale. Now the cube is this scale. And so the solidify modifier works on it. But it's also a little bit, uh, there's a little bit of a problem here. I'm going to go ahead and turn the solidify modifier off and on. And do you see what our problem is? Uh, let me go zoom in right on the corner here. Okay, solidify modifier off, solidify modifier on. Our walls are solidifying, are thickening to the inside. 
And that's a problem because that space is for our sticky notes. So it's in encroaching on our sticky note space. We need it to solidify to the outside. And that is what the offset is for. So if we make the offset zero, it'll solidify in both directions. Well, we don't want it to do that either. Let's take it all the way up to one. And now it only solidifies to the outside, leaving the inside dimensions exactly what they want them to be. And I could at this time print this out and organize my sticky notes in it, and this would work just fine. But I'm gonna go back into edit mode, turn off solidify modifier so we can see what we're doing and make some modifications. I'm gonna add some loop cuts to the side here. I'm gonna grab this one right here and move it down into Z and then scale it. So that we get a little, so we get a little tab opening that we can, uh, we can access our stuff with. And I'm actually just going to make that two millimeters off of there, and then we're going to resolidify it. And if we look at it from the side, we'll see that the solidify modifier is doing something odd. In fact, if we go into wireframe mode, it's like the edges aren't quite two millimeters, and the problem is because it is actually doing two millimeters from the corner. But we want the thickness to remain the same and for the corners to kind of get a little bit thicker. Uh, just mathematically, don't worry about it. Just hit even thickness. And now it's, it, it's flat and it's perfect and it looks exactly the way that we want it to be. There we go. There is a perfect little desk organizer that I can print out and put my sticky notes in, put it in my drawer, have everything nice and organized. So that that's that's the easy way. While we've been talking, you've maybe been hearing my 3D printer in the background. I've been printing batches of these cute little characters that I've created for Cthulhu and friends, currently printing Haster. This print is going to be going for another day, but I wanted to give you guys this lesson. It was so important. I didn't want to pause the print or, or do it. We'll wait for the print to finish. So I hope that you'll want to check out Cthulhu and Friends. It's going to be a fun little Kickstarter. I'll have a link where you can check it out. And uh, we'll talk about that when it gets to it. But right now, I want to talk about what if I don't want to do it the easy way? What if I want to do something that's a little bit more complicated? Maybe something that's a little bit more uh, interlocking? What if I wanted to make a print-a-block post-it note holder? Totally can. And let's talk about how to do that. But this one's going to be a little bit more complicated, so we're going to do it in time lapse. Okay, so start by hiding this, and then bring back the full block one, and then we're going to shift a cube, and then we're going to, again, move it up by one, and scale it by eight, so that it is now 16 by 16 by 16. However, we want it to remain a interval of 16, so I'm just going to actually abuse the mathematics here and go times three. 16 times 5. Ooh, that's good, but I need a little bit of space on the side to work with it. Uh, so we're going to have to go 16 times 6. Okay? 16 times 6. And Z height. Uh, we're going to have to go 16 times 2, right? Uh, you know what? If they stick out the top, that's not going to be a bad thing. All right. We're going to move these up. 4. And then we're going to file import the SDL of the connector name. You can download this anywhere they can be found and just move them down. I'm going to move this edge down by 0.2 because Blender doesn't like to have things just on the edge when it does Boolean. It likes them to be a little bit past. That's going to mess up the bevel just a little bit, but it's fine. It's fine. It's not a big deal. Uh, four millimeters. Is that high enough for it? It looks like I'm going to have to move it one more millimeter up. Actually, no, that'll be fine. If I remember, it's, there's a 0.2 millimeter difference, but this will be fine. Okay, we are going to... We're going to start by moving everything over 16. Oops, not that. Just these two. GX 16. 16 again. GY 32. Uh, like that, GX8, GY8. There we go. That puts that connector right in the corner so that we can do something crazy with it. We're going to call this connector um, negative Z. And then we're going to duplicate it, rotate it by 90, and snap. I got snap going. Absolute grid snap. There we go. That way I can just do that and then use this to fine tune it. All right. This is negative X. Duplicate, rotate 180 degrees. Move over 64, move over 32. There we go. Perfect. Always multiple to 16. You just kind of get used to where those are. And we're going to name this plus X. Double negative X, I gotta fix that. All right, now we're going to grab these two. I'm gonna do this around the 3D cursor. Duplicate, rotate 90 in the negative, that way it's perfect. And we're going to call this negative Y, and we're going to call this one positive Y. Now, now comes the magic. All right, we only got, that's easy, so we're just going to generate array. Uh, you are not relative, you are going to be moving constant. Not apparently in the X, but in the Y, 16 per, apparently negative 16 per. Yeah, I'm not dealing with that, I'm gonna rotate you 180 degrees. Whoop, around your own medium. There we go. 
two, three, four, five, six. Actually, the front one is not going to have that. Ah, we'll, we'll deal with that later. Um, control L, link monitor, copy modifiers. Once again, you gotta rotate 180 degrees. And then let's add an array modifier to this one. Again, you're not going in the X, and you're not going relative, you're going constant. Your constant is 16, two, three, four, five. And we're just going to, oops. We're just going to control L, copy modifiers. Boom, no problem. Now, we're going to do the same thing on the bottom. Again, not relative, constant. And 16 in the X, two, three, four, five. And then we're just gonna actually just duplicate this array. And we're going to do this in the Y. And boom, there we go. However, printer blocks, when you have the space to do it, get between, uh, there we go. So we'll just drop these so they're only five by five. That gives us, gives us more connection points. That's good, that's what we're looking for. Now I do wanna add a little access panel to the front here. So what we're going to do is change this modifier. So it's just two, but then it's 16 times five to get it over there. And now we're gonna, we'll get this little cut in here and we're going to take this bad boy. I'm just gonna extrude it out this way. How much did you extrude? No, we're gonna do a nice uh, 12. Yeah, 12 will work. Uh, do we want to move these? Yes, we want to move these over. Hmm, do we want to move them over more than that, though? That's the question, I suppose. You know what? I'm not doing these to nice printer block proportions. Oh, well. Ah, uh, well. Can't get them all perfect. Except it's bugging me, because I, <laughs> I want them to be perfect. Um, we'll play with that later. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to take our cube here, and we're going to start. So this is going to be a printer block post-it note. Hold it. And we're going to start by, uh, we've got to apply that modifier so that this works properly, apply that scale. And we're going to start with a generate bevel modifier, and we give it a bevel edge of one. That makes it a standard printer block sort of doobly. Then we add another modifier, and this is going to actually, actually, we're going to use the Google Tools modifier and just control minus that out. I don't know how I feel about that. We'll see how I feel about that as we go. Control minus that out, and grab those ones, and control minus them out. Control minus those. Control minus, you know what? Oh boy, I'm doing this the hard way. Let's do this the easy way. Sometimes I forget that there's an easy way. New connect collections, we'll call it connectors. We'll put all the connectors in there, and then we will do one Boolean modifier with a difference on the whole collection of connectors. And then we can hide the connectors collection once it finishes the math here. And boom, there we have a nice little, ooh, something ugly happened in there, never mind, we'll deal with that later. A nice little printer block holder for our sticky notes. And there we go. I have to admit that after recording, I, I did decide to make one small change. Instead of having the notch in the front cut out by the blocks, I instead went into edit mode on the block and cut out a little notch in there so that the bevel modifier would be applied to the edge of that before the sticky notes were cut out of it. And then we've got all of the connectors added to it. Now, my one question about this is, is it tall enough? It seems a little bit thin. It's probably gonna be fine for, for my stack of sticky notes, but a new stack of sticky notes, or if I wanted to put multiple sticky notes in there, maybe I should think about making one that's twice as tall. Uh, I don't know. But either way, I'm gonna throw this at the 3D printer and see how it turns out. Now, this idea of using printer block connectors to make a desk organizer is a project that I have wanted to do for quite a while, but haven't really dived into yet. And in fact, it's something that I'm not going to dive into immediately because I do have the Cthulhu and Friends Kickstarter that I'm currently working on and I want to see that one through first. So, uh, you know, I may not pursue this, but now you know everything that you need to be able to pursue this. So why not jump in, make some nice organizers for your desk. And if you want to try your hand at making them printer blockified, now you know how to do that. I certainly hope that this has helped you or helped somebody. And I want to thank you very much for watching and remind you that you are a child of God. So you're special to me. So take care of yourself. And if you can, someone else too. I'll see you next time.